Patrick in Nacogdoches. Yes. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Uh, Jen will be taking your call as I recover <laughs> from beating up on morons. Oh, that's actually pretty cool because uh, this was kind of directed at her anyway. Okay. Good for you. <laughs> uh, well, basically I want to talk about how it's okay to make religious threats, but not okay to make physical threats. And that sounds kind of strange, but I just wanted to give an example if that's okay. Okay. For example, in fourth grade, I was, the, the school that I attended through this huge, huge, huge fit whenever I told a, another girl that I wanted to push her down because I was so mad. And then a similar thing happened in high school, and they labeled it, they labeled both occasions as terroristic threats. Okay. Uh, on YouTube, I was having a debate with somebody and he was a black Islamic fundamentalist. And I've never run into one of those before, but they're pretty scary, I guess, because he was talking about how he doesn't see why he can't just flail me right now because he will eventually be able to when the world ends and Allah lets him... Uh, own me as his own slave, and in, in one particular response to me, he said uh, he would rape my daughters and all these other like really, really like grisly things. And I tried to report it, and nothing was done. And I even went to uh, the sheriff's office in Porter, where uh, I used to live and showed them, and they said there was nothing they could do about it because of some technicality, I can't remember. Yeah. And I'll actually email you the conversations because they're pretty interesting. Yeah. But I just... Well, basically, I, yeah, the, the, the rule on making threats to people is that um, it, it has to be something credible. And so some anonymous or semi-anonymous YouTube user making some kind of threat of something that's going to occur in the afterlife, you know, whatever is viewed as less credible than you standing there toe-to-toe -to -toe with somebody telling them you're going to push them down. So that's it in a nutshell. Right. I just, it invokes the same emotions as if he had said it um, in a way that, like, he, he was going, he, without religion, you know what I mean? Yeah. It offended me just as much. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's just kind of something that's really hard to take in, and I get kind of upset when people can hide behind something like religion and say all these really petty things that are extremely well, offensive. Well, the scary thing is, is that people hide behind their religion to do vile things every day. And, and they're not even just talking about it. They actually use religion as their authority to do horrible things to people. I mean, all those kids that were raped by Catholic priests, do you think that, that none of them were told that, you know, that this was okay, that, the, you know, that um, Jesus approved, or, or even that, you know, that they had to because it was a priest who was making the demand? You know, right, and I'm just was, saying that I'm surprised that really nothing's being done about anything like that. And it, I, I don't know, I just, I just see it as a failing of a really big system. Well, and, and the rule is, is that unless this person takes some kind of um, uh, tangible step toward carrying out a threat, then it's, you know, it's, it's just free speech. And it can be offensive, but, you know, it's, it's still just free speech. Uh, right. The moment they, they make a move toward actually carrying out the the threat, um, then you have a case, and you can go to the police and you know do whatever you need to do with that. Right. It's just like he he lived not that far away, and I was I, I don't know I felt genuinely scared. Yeah. But there was, I, I don't know I just felt like there it was like an impending doom almost. Yeah. So, but I mean that's really all I wanted to talk about, and I just want to get your opinion in particular, just because you probably faced a lot of bigotry. I don't want to assume or anything, but um, because of your lifestyle and everything, uh, I, I just thought that you might have... 
a little bit more to say about it. Um, it, it without knowing exactly what was said, I, I don't even know that'd be fair for me to comment, other than to say that, um, you know, if you genuinely feel threatened, then you should, you know, contact the authorities. And if you find that you're in a position where you're continually feeling threatened um, and nothing's happening, you might want to talk to somebody else to see maybe you're overreacting. Maybe you're, you're particularly sensitive to things. Um, I'm not saying that's the case for you. I'm saying that in general for, for everybody. If you find that you're, you're really getting upset over things that other people are kind of shrugging off as, you know, that's not that bad, um, there may be other issues. Uh, but, you know, we've had people call in, you know, one guy called to get directions to the studio so he could come down here and, you know, punch me in the face for Jesus or something. Uh, you know, it's... And I just don't have to deal with that. Like, I think that, that was actually the first time I've ever dealt with something like that. So it was like, wow, somebody can really say this, you know? Like, well, that's the know, thing. And yeah. they can get away with it? I've never had experience with that. That's so. the thing. They, they, you know... Free speech means that you're going to run into a lot of things that you're not going to like. And, you know. Yeah, I mean. I'm, I'm great with that, actually. Yeah, we, we actually have um, pretty much everybody who's an open atheist out there in North America and possibly even the world over has gotten an email from a particularly um, egregious little troll that we won't even yeah. name here. Um, and he, he makes all kinds of wild threats. Um, and basically, you know, we've learned to set email filters so we don't have to look at this stuff and hit the delete key. You know, he's a miserable excuse for a human being. And, you know, I'm, I'm content to let him wallow in his misery. And, and if his emails make him think he's, you know, doing something important or whatever, that's fine. Um, you know, they, they sound scary, but, you know, unless he actually does something about it, there's nothing any of us can do, as annoying as it is. 